I drove down the mountain, went to pick up Suzanne, check out her cool camper van, and we headed over to Portobello. We stayed at El Bongo Hotel, and the restaurant they have there is great. It's one of the very few places where I've seen accessibility features. This was our room, completely comfortable, very serviceable, had a little mini fridge and a microwave. And of course, we had to sneak in and see some of the other rooms when they were open. You can see they have uh, bunk bed rooms available that face out onto the beach. There's a couple of rooms downstairs. And we paid 140 for two nights for the two of us. The restaurant has a few Thai inspired dishes and you can even just stop in there and use the restaurant if you're driving around and gonna go explore Portobello. The hotel offered kayak rentals, so we kayaked around the water and found some mangroves to kayak through. That was pretty cool. Nice little shady area. And then we were coming back around kayaked out to the island that's across from the hotel and saw a cute monkey. It was all by himself. I'd say we got very pretty lucky with the weather because technically it was still rainy season and we had sun both days, although the day that we snorkeled it did start to rain in the afternoon. But this kayak day was just beautiful. Nice Sunny skies, puffy clouds, nice breeze. Couldn't ask for more. This little one was just hanging out all by himself on the island. Who knows, maybe he got banished there for bad behavior with a different group of monkeys on a different island, or maybe there were a bunch of monkeys hiding out, and if we were going to get out of the kayak, they were going to come, uh, you know, take over the kayak Aww. and sail away. Who knows, but he was a cutie. When I was in elementary school, I wanted a pet monkey so badly. I think I told my parents that I would convert my room into a full room for the monkey. And I don't know where I was going to sleep, but I was just going to have a monkey room and it was going to be my pet. And then as I got older, I realized there's a lot of monkeys are not that nice. They're actually kind of mean. Um, so now I don't want a pet monkey and it's nice just to see them on occasion. For our big night out on the town, we went to Restaurante El Castillo, just up the street from the El Bongo where we were staying. Really cool spot over the water, and we had some seafood, of course, that's kind of the thing to have, I think, when you're in Portobello or in Panama in general. And you know, there's kind of a pirate theme at, at some of the places that you'll see, but for good reason, there actually are pirate ships that are out in the ocean. And there are people that actually look for sunken treasure.
Suzanne and I were really excited for the snorkeling and we were going actually on a boat with a lot of scuba divers and we got a late start I think probably a couple hours late <laughs> and uh, there were some miscommunications and things but overall we did have a good snorkel trip. Snorkeling is absolutely one of my favorite activities. If you know of any great snorkeling spots, please let me know. I just want to do more snorkeling in my life. Somehow during the quarantine, they were able to build this beautiful addition where the restaurant's going to be over the water. And that is a really nice addition because it's really relaxing just to sit out there and look at the sunset. Okay, so Suzanne has the scissors ready. We're not doing surgery, but so last night I noticed that my bed was very, very crunchy sounding. And that's because, well, we thought, what did we think? <laughs> we thought it was a wet, wet the bed that was covering the bed because Patty, you know. I might have an accident. Yeah. No, also we thought maybe it was like a COVID protocol. Or bed bugs. But it turns out it's maybe just laziness because <laughs> it appears that the bed just, they never took off the plastic from the new mattress. Fresh and clean. <laughs> so now we're going to remove it so I can have a silent night's sleep. The inaugural cut. Yay! There was a lot of activity going on in Portobello. There was a road race, there were cyclists, there were all the fun colored buses driving around town. I think breakfast of fried dough and hot dogs was a little heavy on our tummy, so we uh, walked around and then um, found this really amazing art gallery that Suzanne had been to before called Casa de Congo. From Casa de Congo's website, the jungle, the rivers, and the sea, the climate, the history linked to indigenous people, galleons, slaves, pirates, and merchants have made Portobello biodiverse and rich in cultural manifestations. All this wealth does not prevent Portobello from still presenting great deficiencies in education, health, and well-being of the population. For this reason, the Bahia de Portobello Foundation is committed to improving the quality of life of the town with programs that seek progress through culture with actions that promote development with identity. The Foundation Bahia de Portobello works in the area of Costa Arriba de Colón, trying to promote the integral and sustainable development of its population. Its strategy focuses on developing and strengthening cultural identity 
taking advantage of the historical and natural capital of Portobello. I fell in love with this painting and Suzanne bought a boat. Make sure you stop by and they also have a hotel and a restaurant. If you do go to Portobello, make sure to bring your own filtered water or a filter straw. It's unlikely that you'll find drinkable water from the tap. There are several fortifications from the 1600s to 1700s built by the Spanish and these forts are listed as UNESCO heritage sites. Pretty cool to have that on the Caribbean side in Panama. And as you can see, it was pretty empty the day that Suzanne and I were just strolling around. Kind of funny throughout history we set up cannons instead of welcome signs when people are coming to new lands and uh, I guess it's just part of being human that we think that people are going to take something that we have but how nice it would be if instead of cannons we had festival tents with music and dancing and food. Traveling from Coronado, Portobello is maybe about a three hour drive and you bypass Panama City for the most part. So there really isn't a huge amount of traffic until you get to a little town called Sabanitas and that will sabotage your plans for getting anywhere on time. I think you could get a signal here but I have one bar and I'm on 3G. We were both pretty hungry, and so we stopped at the Summit Rainforest Resort and had a bite to eat before continuing the drive back from Portobello. Thanks so much for coming along this journey. The next video is the house that I bought in El Valle.